Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is Straight Out of Boston here, and today I'm back for episode number 13 of my Tampa Bay Rays Let's Play series here on Out of the Park Baseball 18. And today we're back with the 2019 ALCS going up against the Houston Astros. So if you missed the last episode, we ended up defeating the Cleveland Indians. Yes, the Cleveland Indians in a game five of the ALDS. That was a five game series, but one that we did end up taking in the end a 42 victory in game number five, thanks to the bullpen. I honestly, like, I recorded that. I want to say almost two weeks ago, and I don't even, I forgot how dramatic that game was. We, there was the, didn't Jake Bowers have like a big double, and then we had the two runs in the eighth there. Anyway, crazy game. I should go back and watch that video clearly, because uh, I don't, I barely even remember how we won, but either way, let's take a look at this Houston team. So, here we go. Uh, Houston played, who did they play in their last series? It's not going to tell me from the screen, is it? Whatever, I'll look it up in a sec. But they were a very good team this year, 99 wins. They were a wild card team, but only because Texas won 101 games in their division. So they must have beaten Texas then in the ALDS uh, as they would have won the wild card game and then ended up facing them. 939 runs scored. That is an obscene amount first in the American League, and they were also fifth in runs against in the American League at 756. So a very good run differential for this team. Definitely anchored by their offense, 97 win uh, Pythagorean win loss, so pretty good on their end, and they were a 96 win team last year, so they've been good for the last couple of years. Now, this is going to be a very tough opponent, and a lot of familiar faces on this team. You see the likes of Alex Bregman, Carlos Correa, Jose Altuve, George Springer. Um, Springer always seems like he's never that good in this game. They have him hitting eighth, but he actually has been a pretty decent player for them uh, the three years that we have simulated in this save. You can see there. A three-win season. They probably underrate his defense a little bit. He's a much better. Or he's played very well in center field so far this year in real life. Um, but anyway, they've got Goriel, who's a decent hitting first baseman. Although they have him DHing, they have Osmer at first base. Eric Hosmer. I I never know if it's Osmer or Hosmer. I never know if the H is like silent or not. I'm probably gonna end up mispronouncing it. So just please don't yell at me in the comments. Derek Fisher, who always turns out to be a beast in this game. You can see he was a four and a half win player, eight seventy seven OPS while playing a pretty respectable left field. Uh, they have Tony Kemp leading off, 370 OBP guy, although only a one-star player, so I'm not too worried about him, but he did have a pretty good OBP for a guy hitting leadoff. And as for their rotation, Dallas Keuchel, their number one guy, not a good year out of him, but he was good the last couple of years, decent track record now, um, so probably someone to look out for. I, I wouldn't say he's going to be a non-factor in this series. I, I'd say we might hear from him. Paulino, guy I honestly never heard of, but 3-5-4 three, four, three, four ERA out of him. Francis Martes, who's one of their good pitching prospects, he had a pretty respectable second season for them. Oh, I guess 4-9-4 ERA is not great, but... And then Kent Emanuel, this guy looks like he's pretty good too. Four-win season, 10.2 Ks per nine, so this is definitely a strikeout guy. Um, so they have a pretty solid rotation. Bullpen, in real life, their bullpen is ridiculous. They have Ken Giles and Will Harris still, no Chris Davinsky, uh, but Franklin Paris is 21 years old and John Del Gustav, so... This is a really, really good team. It's going to be tough to beat them. Uh, luckily, they don't have Kyle Tucker up. I'm kind of surprised by that. He always turns into a beast in this game. And you can see he's probably going to be uh, one of their starting outfielders next year. I wonder if they might move one of their guys. Maybe we can make a move for like a Derek Fisher or something. Or I guess they would trade Springer theoretically because he his money's going up and he's a free agent in the next couple of years. But who knows? We'll see about that. Something to uh, think about as we move towards the offseason. But before we do that, we've got the ALCS, so let's get into it. We obviously had Chris Sale pitch in Game 5, so it's going to be Blake Snell going in Game 1. I think we'll do... Oh, I forgot that Norris got hurt. Uh, right, so I'm not sure what, what we're going to... Because we have to set the roster now. That really stinks. Forearm tendonitis. Do we think he's going to be out for the series? The thing is, if he is... I don't really know who we, who we would replace him with. Uh, out of the guys eligible, we could obviously bring someone who isn't eligible up because we would be putting him on the DL, but I don't really know. It doesn't really seem like we'd have... I'm just going to take the risk that, that Norris is able to come back for w one game in the series at least because we don't really have anyone who I feel like I would want to use in a playoff series uh, that I'm not already using in terms of our pitching, so... All right, here we go. Game number one, Blake Snell getting the nod. This is going to be our lineup. I don't think I was messing with the lineup. Um, I guess I was because, yeah, I need Rizzo playing. So I had Rizzo going over Gillespie. So we'll put him in there. And let's see. It looks like Urena was struggling pretty badly. Um, we don't – can. oh, yeah, Hanson can play shortstop. So we can do Hanson. We can put Travis in at – or we do him at second? Do you want him at second or third base? 
Can Ibanez play third base? I think Ibanez plays third base pretty well, right? Yes, he does. So we'll put Ibanez at third, Travis at second, Hanson at short. And we'll start Matt Wieters because I remember Perez was struggling pretty badly. And Wieters had a good final two games of the series. So, all right, that is going to be our lineup. Here we go. Game number one. Snell on the mound, as I said. He pitched game two for us last series. Was not too great. Six innings, four runs, only three strikeouts, eight hits. So here we go. From Tampa Bay, a three-run first for us. That's a very good start. Setting the tone in game number one. Now we've got Snell a lead. Let's see if he can protect it. Two more runs for him right there. And he's got seven strikeouts so far, so pitching a lot better tonight. Although he's given up three runs now. 86 pitches, so this will probably be his final inning. Gives up another run, so Snell really struggling for us. Uh, we're going to have to get someone up. So we've been relying on Felipe Rivera a lot, Mike Morin, Alex Colome, um, Birdie or Biagini. I think we'll get Biagini up. And let's do runners in scoring position. All right, so he gets through that inning at least. So six innings, another four runs for Snell. But at least he does leave with the lead. That is a good sign. They've got McCullers in now. McCullers pitching out of their bullpen, interestingly enough. I'll have to check out his ratings at the end of this uh, game. Biagini on for the seventh. And I think, uh, do we trust him more than Colome at this point? Maybe. Because Colome, oh no, he pitched pretty well in the, in the ALDS. So we're going to have to be careful. I'm going to get Rivero up just in case, but I do, do also trust Biagini. And Biagini, uh, nope, he gave up a leadoff double. Is Goriel up? Yeah, he is. All right, so we got to be careful here. Goriel strikes out swinging. That is good. Springer is up next. And Biagini just got hurt. Cool. Alrighty then. So we'll put Rivero in. <laughs> For Springer, we've got a... Oh God, he's going to have to face a couple righties here. This might not be a great move on my part, but we don't really have a choice. That one's grounded to third. That's into left field for a base hit. Runner will not score. Altuve holds at third. So now Correa's up. Two strikes on Correa. He ooh, pops one up to the second baseman. That is going to be caught. Two down now. A huge out number two. Bregman up next. Ground ball shortstop. Takes it to the bag himself. And Felipe Rivero gets out of the jam. Huge two outs right there from Rivero. So he's at 12 pitches. I'm going to bring Colome in for the eighth. Let's go half inning. Another insurance run for our bullpen. Colome, And then we will get Mike Morin up. So Colome pitches a clean eighth. And we'll turn it over to our closer here in the ninth. Two-run lead. All right, another double for Altuve this time with one out. So the tying run at the dish. Goriel, third base, on to first in time. Looked like Ibanez might have been playing no doubles right there. Now 2-0 count to Springer. He hits one to deep right, but our right fielder on the move. He's got it, and that is going to do it. Uh, Rays take game number one. So we lead the ALCS one game to nothing. A big game, number one victory. And still no diagnosis on Norris, so he's not going to be able to go. It's going to have to be Honeywell pitching game number two. And then hopefully we'll be able to go Sale game three and probably De Leon game four at this rate. Doesn't look like Norris is going to be back. Also, no diagnosis on Biagini. We don't even know what the injury is. At least we know what the injury is for Norris. Hopefully, I don't know. It's kind of... I don't, I don't remember if usually when it's unknown, I feel like they usually come back relatively soon, but... We'll see. We will see. So here we go. Game number two. Dallas Keuchel against Brent Honeywell. Uh, we're going to go same lineup we had in game one. Put Rizzo in. Put... Ooh, actually, I already took Urena out. That's perfect. And we're going to put... Do they have a lefty on the mound? Is that it? So maybe we'll go with Perez against the lefty. Weeders. Oh, he was two for four last game. He's so hot right now. And he's a switch hitter. Let's just go with Weeders. All right, Honeywell. Game number two, so he had a big game three performance for us. Six innings, only one hit, seven strikeouts, no runs when he faced Cleveland. Let's see if he can continue that here in game number two of the LCS. Ooh, a five-run second. So Tampa Bay jumping out early. So we've got a five-run lead in Honeywell. Once again, looking pretty solid. Does give up the one run there in the fifth. But now it is six to one. All right, six to two. Honeywell's already on 108 pitches, so I already left him in too long. Um, who do we go with right now? Let's go with Birdie. I'm going to be a little bit careful because I didn't warm him up, so let's just get Felipe Rivero up in case he runs into trouble. 
But Birdie with a clean seventh. Now, ideally, oh yeah, only four pitches. We're going to try and get two innings out of Birdie then. And then I'll turn to Rivero pretty much no matter what for the ninth because we have the off day coming up. I might as well use him since he appears to be fully rested. So Birdie gives up a leadoff double to Correa. Now he's got a lefty to face Stubbs. Ground ball to second on to first in time. One down for Altuve. That ball gets behind the catcher. That's going to get a run home. No problem there, though. Still a four-run lead. Altuve, that is going to be a base hit. So now with the bottom half up, let's let's put Rivero in. I don't want to let this inning get away from us or anything. Plus, we got the lefty up in Osmer, Hosmer, whatever. So Rivero facing the former Royals first baseman. There's two for three tonight. That's a ground ball to second for one on a first in time. A big 4-6-3 double play, and Rivero gets out of it. So we take a four-run lead into the bottom half of the eighth. Still a four-run lead. Let's see Rivero in there for the ninth, and he is through it. So he gives us five big outs on 11 pitches, and we take game number two, a 2-0 series lead. And that is huge. We take the first two games of the series. Now, Biagini, I think he looks like he's available to pitch day-to-day, -day, so we're going to have to be careful with him. don't want to use him too much, but the effect appears to be minimal on uh, his performance. So that's good. So he will be available for game number three. And so will Chris Sale. He will be back pitching for us. That is good. Fully rested after his big game five performance. Still no word on when Norris is going to be back. But that's pretty big to win the first two games of the series, and you didn't have to use Chris Sale yet. So it's going to be Sale against Francis Martes. Well, now let's get our lineup changes in there. Rizzo, Travis in for Yarina. Put Travis at second. Ibanez at third. Hanson at short. And Weeders at catcher. And all right. So Sale, he has not been great so far this postseason, but still by far our best pitcher. You can't deny that, even though um, he has not been great. But here we go. The series shifts to Houston. Big game number three coming up. Prob well, I'm not going to say a must win for Houston, but wow, I'll two base 17 for 30 in the postseason so far. Holy smokes. That is ridiculous. All right, here we go. Game number three, and Tampa jumps out to a 2-0 lead there in the third. Houston gets one back. Still 2-1, sale at 71 pitches. Only two strikeouts. He has really not been great so far this postseason. And he gives up another run right there. Still, though, pitching solid so far today, I would say. So six innings, two runs so far for Chris. He is at 96 pitches. So we'll let him at least start the seventh. This is really the, well, I guess the game one was pretty close, but first time we've had a tie game late in this series. And, all right, the top of their lineup is almost up, so I'm going to get Colome up instead of Rivero just because they feature a bunch of righties at the top half of their lineup. Sale gets through the seventh unscathed. So his day is going to be down 105 pitches, seven innings, two runs, pretty solid stuff out of Sale, not dominant by any means. The strikeouts weren't, uh, weren't there, but... He did what he could, gave up seven hits, uh, and he got a 1-2-3 inning there, so it's going to be Springer, Correa, Bregman up in the eighth. We're going to get Column Man for that. And all right, top half of the eighth for us. Ooh, and a solo home run from Josh Bell gives us a 3-2 to two lead. Can we add any more? No, we cannot. But now it's Colome on to face 3-4-5. This is probably the biggest uh, threat for Houston rest of the game, I would say. Because if we can get by the 3-4-5, I guess Fisher's going to be pretty tough, too. We'll probably bring in, bring in Rivero for Fisher. But there we go. Strikeout for George Springer. And let's get Rivero up because I do want him to face Fisher. Now the 1-2 count to Correa. He goes down swinging. Two down. It is Alex Bregman's turn. And he goes down swinging. Colome strikes out the side. A dominant eighth from him. And we head to the ninth. Up 3-2 on the verge of taking a 3-0 series lead. And wow, a huge ending, a five-run ninth. And that's pretty much going to seal it, I would say. I'd be very shocked if we blew this two-run home run from Rowdy Tellez. And the offense coming to play so far this series. This has been awesome. Rivero. All right, he gives up a couple hits right there. One out, Osmer up. He is going to rip this one towards the gap, yeah, but the left fielder makes the play. That's going to get one run home, but now two down, a big out number two right there. And we're going to get more in up because I don't want Rivero to run into too much trouble with the top half of Houston's lineup. 2-1 count to Altuve. Grommel to the third baseman on a first in time, and Tampa Bay takes a 3-0 series lead in the ALCS. 
in, well, I'm not going to say dominant fashion. That was a close game for eight innings, and then we blew it open there in the ninth. Houston did threaten a little bit. You can see the, you can even see the win probability chart slightly dipping below the, uh, the top line right there, but either way, that is going to do it. So game number three in the books, on to game number four. Now, the big question is, will Daniel Norris be ready? And no, he will not. So this is going to be a Jose De Leon start. I'm not going to bring back Snell on short rest. I would much rather go with De Leon, even though he's, uh, he was excluded from the rotation at the beginning of the postseason, and he's going to have to face Kent Emanuel. But I think he provided some good innings for us in relief, uh, if I do remember correctly, in the LDS. Eh, maybe not. 12-2-7 <laughs> ERA. Gave up five runs in three and two-thirds. I guess that was the game he must have had to come in for Norris. So, um, all right. Now, I forgot to look up McCullers. Coming out of their bullpen, his rating's not too great in this. Yeah, the control, definitely a problem for him. I can see why they've got him in the bullpen. Interesting decision, though. They still have Davinsky, but he's criminally underrated in this game. Just too bad. Call him the Q as well. Probably a little bit underrated in this game, too. But that's all right. I'm not I am not complaining, believe me. So here we go. Game number four. Chance to sweep Houston. Oh, no. I started the game without making my lineup changes. Okay. Um... I'm going to put in Rizzo at the very least because he's very important. I'm not going to put in Weeters because if he got hurt, we wouldn't have any catchers, even though he is hot. It's too bad. I screwed up right there. Luckily, mistakes you can probably afford to make in a uh, when you have a 3-0 series lead, but ones I'd rather not make for sure. We'll see. We, this might end up being... Yep, this is going to be a throwaway game. All right. <laughs> De Leon gave up. 10 runs in two innings, so not much you can do about that. On to game number five. So we get Snell back on the mound. Now we are going to have to face the top of Houston's rotation again, but we didn't have too much trouble with them the first time around, and this time we're going to remember to make our lineup changes <laughs> and not be an idiot. Uh, put Weeders in there and put Travis in. Second base, third base, and shortstop. And all right, here we go. Game number five. Another chance to try and move on to our first World Series in 11 years. Let's see if we can do it. Series still in Houston. This will be the final game played in Houston no matter what. Snell not looking too sharp early as Houston's got a 3 nothing lead. Snell's pitch count's already getting up there too. Although he had a quick fourth right there that helped him. Four runs now. So Snell really has not been good for us in this postseason. Let's get, we're going to just have to use, I mean, we have an off day tomorrow anyway, so we might as well use our good relievers. All right, Correa, let's just get Snell out of there. We'll bring in Colome to face Correa. Nothing going for us at this point. Colome at 18 pitches, I don't want to burn him. So it looks like the series is going to end up going back to Tampa for a game number six. As the momentum has certainly turned, there's no denying that. We get four hit, Paulino, eight innings, three hits, eight Ks, one walk, no runs allowed, and Snell struggled once again, and Houston now, a little bit of momentum, they've taken games four and five, and it's now a three to two series. Norris still unavailable, looking like he's not going to be back at all for this series. It's going to be Brent Honeywell in game number six, and we do have the Chris Sale card to play in game seven, but they've got Keuchel going. So this could be uh, this could be a little dangerous right here. This series, I'm not feeling too great at this point. I thought getting out, I didn't. Well, put it this way, I certainly did not expect to get out to a three nothing series lead. So maybe a little bit of regression to the mean right now. But I definitely definitely not feeling too confident. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Game number six back in Tampa. We have not lost in Tampa yet this series. That's big. We've got two chances to win in Tampa. So. Hopefully, we can take advantage of the home field. Game number six, underway, Keuchel versus Honeywell. Honeywell has been very, very sharp for us in both of his starts so far this postseason. But just as I say that, he gives up three runs in the fourth. Houston with a 3 nothing lead. And all of a sudden, our bats have gone completely silent. This is very concerning. Keuchel just cruising right now at 46 pitches through five innings. There we go. We get one run there in the sixth. Honeywell... And 106 pitches. I gotta. I really gotta pay more attention to that. Let's get Colome and Rivero up. I'm gonna try and get at least one or two outs with Honeywell. It is the bottom of the order. Hosmer ground ball the first. He is retired. One down. 
Honeywell's tired at this point, so let's just get him out of there. Springer, we're going to go with the righty column A to face Springer. 3-1 count to the Houston right fielder, and he is going to take the base on balls. Next batter is Colin Bray. That is lined over the third baseman said. That's going to be a base hit. That'll actually be a double right there. This is not going well. Kemp now. He strikes out swinging. Big out number two. Bregman. He gets a base hit up the mill. That's going to score two runs. 5-1 lead for Houston now. This is going very, very poorly. I got to get him out of there. Holy crap. Come on, Colum A. 27 pitches. Couldn't even get two outs. Oh, and it's a 9-1 to game. So this series is going seven. This is not good. I, I, oh, man, this is not good. <laughs> all right, game seven. Houston has come all the way back. And look at that. We got Willie Adams off the DL. Good for us. We can put him on the postseason roster if we make the World Series. But, oh, man. All right. Here we go. Game number seven for all the marbles. It's going to be Chris Sale against Francis Martez. Do our lineup adjustments. I swear this always happens when I do something like that. Well, when I'll play a game four and like I'll forget to do my lineup adjustments, it'll just it'll come back to bite me. I'll have like a quote unquote throwaway game and then I'll just end up losing the series because of something like that. I'm not saying I'm not saying that's gonna be why we lose the series if we end up losing the series, but it certainly did not help. I guess De Leon probably would have given up ten runs no matter what. But still can't help but feel like I sort of screwed that up. And should we change the lineup a little bit? Maybe move weeders up. Move Kiermaier down, perhaps. Yeah, I think that's the right call. All right. Chris Sale, we need a big start out of Chris Sale. This is like this is why you get a guy like Sale for a big one-game playoff like this. This is essentially a one-game playoff, and we need it. We need it desperately. So here we go. Game number seven from Tampa Bay. Chris Sale against Francis Martes, I believe. Yes. Here it is. Game number seven. All right, we got a two-run second inning right there. So we've got Sale a lead. He's got two strikeouts, but also two walks through two innings. Through four, scoreless is Sale at 64 pitches. Three hits allowed so far. Looking good. 3 nothing lead now. We've got a lead to work with. Now we just got to protect it. Sale gives one back. How many pitches is he at? Obviously, got to be careful here in Game 7. 93. All right, so we've got a two-run lead. They have what part of their lineup do up? All right, they've got seven, eight, nine, and then a bunch of righties. So I'm going to get – see, this is tough. i got to use more in against – because I figure if things go smoothly, we'd only have to face the top half of their lineup one more time. So no matter what, because Morin is our most rested reliever, I'm going to use him against Altuve, Gurriel, Springer, Correa, Bregman, that part of the lineup probably. If Sale could maybe get Altuve, and then I could use ideally Morin for those four batters, that would be – perfect but we'll see how it goes sales got to face the lefty stubs that one falling fast but look at kiermeyer making the play that's why you have kiermeyer out there 80 grade center fielder one down for colin bray that's grounded softly to the second baseman on the first in time two down now eric Hosmer. he goes down swinging so a big strikeout right there sail through seven very strong innings only one run that is what you like to see from your ace i'm gonna sit down more in i'm gonna bring sale back out to start the next inning we'll see where that goes uh, no need for me to play this inning. Let's see if we can get an insurance run, though. No, we cannot. All right, so let's get Morin back up. So like I said, ideally, Sale gets at least Altuve. If he gets Altuve, I'm probably going to let him face Gurriel. Altuve to left. That is going to be an out. So out number one. Now it is Gurriel's turn. He's behind in the count one and two. Ground ball to the shortstop. On to first in time. Two down. Now, do I let him face Springer? He's at 111 pitches. He's got that 75 stamina rating. I think I'm going to let him go. 0-2 count to Springer. He goes down swinging. Huge strikeout sale. Eight innings, one earned run, seven Ks, two walks. A huge start out of Chris Sale. Once again, coming up huge in a deciding winner-take-all game. Did it in Game 5 last series. He's doing it again, again in Game 7 tonight. Part of me even wants to let him trot out there for the ninth. I might, I might just do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to be careful here because I don't want to sit Morin down completely and then have him be cold for the next inning. So I'm gonna have to go batter by batter for this inning. Because if the first two guys get out, then I'm just gonna put him back warming up, which I think is gonna happen because Will Harris is very, very good. 
So we've got Ibanez up now. 1-1 one, one counts. That's going to be a ground out. Or is it? No, that one gets away. I was wondering why he was, like, rounding first there. That was weird. So he reaches on the error. Now it is Bauer's turn. And he grounds one pretty hard to the first baseman, but that is going to be corralled. Two down. Let's get Morin back up. He should be at least warming up still. Oh, he's still ready. That's perfect. Now, can we get the insurance run? Bell to the first baseman. That is going to be out number three. So on to the ninth. Tampa three outs away. It's going to be Correa, Bregman, and Fisher. Probably a little bit dangerous to let Sale face this part of the lineup again. This would be the fourth time through for him, but... He's been pitching so well the last couple innings. I think I got to let him go. At least give him one batter. Correa flying one to right. That one falling fast, but it's caught. That is out number one. Now I'm going to take him out because he is tired at this point. 120 pitches. That was a 3-2 count. So here we go. Mike Morin on to face Alex Bregman. 3-2 count to Bregman. Morin with a 2-1 ERA this year. He was very, very good. Has not been as good in the postseason, though. But that is going to be a ground out. Two down now. Last chance is Derek Fisher. The 1-2 count. He strikes out swinging. And that does it. Tampa Bay is moving on to the World Series. We survive. And boy, do I mean that when I say survive. Because that was getting awfully close. I was definitely getting nervous at that point. <laughs> but Chris Hill comes up huge again. It's going to be Los Angeles in the World Series. And look at that, year number three, and we're in the World Series. This is pretty exciting stuff if you are a Tampa Bay Rays fan. So that is going to do it. Hope you guys enjoy. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the World Series.